Hello and welcome. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll record this and um, I'll, I'll post it as well. So um, anyone who's not uh, here because of whatever um, snafu from the uh, uh, link will hopefully be able to watch this uh, regardless. So um, let's get this thing uh, going there. There we go. So I start with this idea that a wandering mind can be a, a powerful mind. Um, that, uh, and I'll describe what I mean by a wandering mind in a moment, but what it, it entails, at least when I'm, uh, some parts of it, but that when the conditions are right, you get more done in an hour than others do all day. Uh, but getting to that point of being in that flow in that moment is like this puzzle that you can never quite solve because between those moments, there's this feeling of being adrift, you're having a hard time focusing, you're relying on deadlines. Um, there's the sea of sticky notes, the overflowing list, the sort of stuff that you're constantly dealing with. And so you try one system app after the next, each one doesn't quite work, or maybe they partially work. And things become more and more difficult as you try to figure out how is it that you can uh, get yourself back to that state. Uh, oftentimes, uh, people are told they're very intelligent. Um, they tell themselves this uh, and uh, or uh, other people tell them this, and they're very well, are often intelligent and creative. Um, but then there's this feeling of blame that often comes. Uh, this must be me, there's something wrong with me. Uh, and uh, while there are certainly differences and uniquenesses to um, each person, uh, and I've, I've never seen any two people with exactly the same issues, there are some commonalities that, are, that we can start exploring. Um, and in those conditions where things work well, uh, this is one of those commonalities, uh, then uh, it's like magic. Things just work really well. Um, you know, in the um, psychiatric li literature and in the psychological literature, even on those things where the extreme of a wandering mind, I don't know if it's extreme, but one of the features of a wandering mind is like one of the subtypes, let's say, is ADHD, right? Um, that uh, it doesn't talk about hyperfocus. It doesn't talk about these, this tendency to like really get into something. And, uh, but I think uh, that it, it ought to, because I've seen it so frequently. Uh, these seemingly opposite conditions of hard time focusing and at the same time, deeply focused at times, these coming together and like the difficulty of navigating those two, that's what I call a wandering mind. Everybody's mind wanders to some extent. It's just that some wander more than others. And even then sometimes more, some days more than others or some, uh, hours more than others. Uh, some people are creative. Some people have anxiety. Some people have, as I mentioned, ADHD. Some people are just bright and bored easily. Uh, some people are curious. Uh, some are just are creatives. That wandering mind, uh, as I mentioned, can be powerful and creative. It's just you're trying to aim for those conditions. And how do you get there? Uh, the trouble with it too, however, is that when you do get there, sometimes there's this dark side to it where um, if you uh, get there and you stay in there too long or you lose track of everything else, then uh, it's hard to uh, uh, um, make sure that you've kept up with other responsibilities and do the things that are important to you. Um, so there's this so-called dark side of flow, this tendency where responsibilities get missed. That, or maybe the, when a person's leveraging deadlines to get there, there's this sort of um, uh, procrastination to get there. So a lot of things might be uh, lost in that process too. Maybe procrastinated too far or just didn't quite time it right. Um, these can be a problem too. One of the sore spots, uh, I think, is that of agency. Um, the, the idea is so many people throughout one's life probably um, they've been told what to do. Oh, just do this. Oh, just do this the other thing or, you know, do it now, do it late, whatever it is. And then they, you might wind up doing this to yourself too. You know, I just got to get started. I just got to do this thing. And so being told what to do uh, becomes uh, a problem. It becomes a, a thing that uh, it's a, it's a chronically injured sort of spot that um, just can rub you the wrong way. Even if somebody gives you a good idea, um, it can, it just hurts because uh, you've been told a lot of things over and over. Um, so oftentimes 
the, the struggle is to try to create your own system. Yeah. So one of the ways that you tend to do this, as I mentioned, are deadlines and, uh, you know, having something at stake, it, it, it can work. Uh, there's, uh, and again, you might even procrastinate to get there, but there are troubles with this. Um, you can't schedule them yourself. Your mind knows there's this, you, you, you're, you can't really trick your unconscious self. And uh, deadlines don't line up with each other either. They're, um, you know, multiple people that you and, and areas of responsibility and places in your life that don't know about each other, or uh, even if they do, I mean, they, they still can have these sort of deadlines that conflict. I mean, how often in uh, you know, schooling, for example, do multiple teachers who ought to be able to talk to each other wind up having tests on the same day? Same thing happens in a job. Same thing happens with, you know, across uh, responsibilities and family. Um, and th deadlines are painful. They, they, they're, uh, they can hurt. They, they're, they're stressed. They're, even though there is a degree of relief that comes with them, like, hey, there's this thing I can focus on. There's also this uh, tension that comes with it too. All right, so another solution some people try are people, right? So um, you might get somebody else involved, a, a spouse, a parent, a friend. Um, and sometimes this can work too, particularly if there's mutuality. So let's say you have a study group, that, that can work. Uh, I, I myself am involved in a writing group where weekly I you know, uh, meet with some writers and we sit down and I, I work on my newsletter. Um, you, in that situation, create some stakes of uh, not wanting to let others down uh, while you're, uh, um, you know, to, to be accountable to each other. And, uh, but there are many scenarios where this is a problem. Uh, often if there's a differential in authority, but not even, and sometimes it's not always that. It's, um, what happens is that one person doesn't know when the other person, what mindset the other person is in. So they say, hey, go do this thing right now. Like, well, I'm not there right now. I don't want to, or um, maybe later or something. So that later shows up. And then what happens is that first person who was supposed to remind them is now uh, becoming a snooze machine and one that builds resentment too, because now they're still holding on and they've become this taskmaster. They, and this one's relying on that one at the same time. Um, it's not uh, a, a, a workable arrangement. So it, it just the relationship starts to suffer. Um, and then of course there are other systems. You might try building something and sometimes they at least partially work. Uh, maybe you have a, an inbox that's um, you know, over flooded, but there's a like, particular section of it that you rely on or you know you have to turn to or look at. Same thing with any task management system. Okay, this, this list works sort of, and I'll keep going back to that. Um, or you know, maybe you use the deadline uh, feature, the due, due date feature in a task system to just bring things up front. And, uh, and sort of that kind of works because that can grow along too. And of course, what makes things more complicated can be technology that at the same time, it helps tremendously. You know, we can't even, we wouldn't be able to have this, this uh, presentation here if it weren't for technology. Um, then uh, there's of course the infinite well of the internet that can be very uh, distracting. And we tend to work on our computers nowadays. So setting up those barriers and designing your environment is very important. So summarizing some of the niceties, some of the things that we'd be like, more than niceties, things that we'd like to get to, things we'd like to do, uh, we'd like to be able to perhaps start and complete things that uh, on your own without a, relying on a deadline. Wouldn't that be nice? Being able to distance yourself from a deadline. Uh, maybe even do things that you don't particularly want to do, but feel that there's an importance and need to doing them. Um, and especially in a way that could support you so that you can get to things that are meaningful and enjoyable to you and responsibly so. Uh, maybe be able to confidently set things aside. You know, if you're in the middle of something and it's time to move on, you'd like to be able to set it aside in a way that you feel uh, that you could reasonably get back to it, that you can feel like, uh, okay, I could pick this thing up again, right? So that's two parts of it. You got to be able to set things up and down and pick things up and, and, uh, uh, in a way that works, in a way that's not about forcing yourself. And then uh, maybe uh, feel that you can make your environment set up in a way that works so that uh, you're not procrastinating while doing that too. You know, it can be all too easy to, um, 
you know, you have a report to write and then you spend four hours researching a good writing program. Like, how do you avoid that process? Um, and then uh, if you feel you can do all of those things, then maybe you can start taking on things that feel challenging too. You can take on larger projects, bigger things, things that uh, can uh, 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 be more uh, just engaging for you. And uh, they would take several sessions perhaps. So multiple times you'd have to set things aside and pick them up again. And if you can feel at ease doing that, feel like, oh, that's not a problem, that would be wonderful. Uh, and then you can start setting goals for yourself, even if that were the case. So a major difficulty in all of this is that of time. This is, time is front and center for a, a wandering mind. It can be hard to remember uh, uh, to do things or to bring them from your past to your present. It can be hard to stay with things in the present. It can be hard to know how long something will take, perhaps more so than most. It's hard to know how long you've been in the middle of something and what's not addressed on the sidelines. And writing tasks for yourself is essentially uh, working with the future. You're trying to fulfill a promise, perhaps, that you're, you're making to yourself. All of these involve some degree of time. Um, so the way I divide this is you have this past you, a present you, and a future you. And there's this relationship that tends to develop or relationships that develops between these components. And learning how to manage those is a huge part of what helps to uh, allow you to engage where you want to, when you want to. It, it's oftentimes that you can make impossible demands of yourself in the future. And as a result, you can't listen to yourself uh, in the past, or you're not able to pay attention to how you are in the moment where, yes, you have something due, but you're exhausted, or, um, or you, you have energy and you want to do something. What do you do with your, your uh, abilities now if you have to do something later on? These sorts of um, components of, these, uh, of the relationship are important to, to think through. Um, so managing these relationships are, are vital. So, okay, what, what, is, what does that mean? Well, one aspect that is very important is in honesty with, with yourself. As I mentioned, for example, with deadlines, you can't trick yourself. Your, your mind already tends to trick yourself uh, in some ways, with, um, uh, particularly perhaps with, with those wandering moments. Um, and being dishonest between yourself in the, in the present, with your past self, with your future self, just undermines whatever uh, trust you're, you're building in your system or with yourself. Um, you can't pretend that future self is going to be able to address the leftover stuff of whatever you're doing now. Uh, but then how do you set something aside so that you can come back later? And that's part of the, 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 the uh, negotiating that relationship. There's a, if I were to encapsulate it, I would say it's, it's a certain care for your future self, an honesty with your present self and an, uh, and an honor of your past self. And how do you turn those into very practical exercises? So it's not just sort of um, seemingly new agey type of stuff. Um, so here are the modules that we'll get into in the course. Uh, the first module is just, um, I call it the voyage. This is basically just setting yourself up. This is the uh, orientation. This is what are we going to do? This is how we're talking about the wandering mind in more depth and, uh, and what kind of mindset would be useful to approach this, this um, uh, course. Then uh, we talk about anchoring. Um, this is what I call the anchoring technique, anchor technique. I uh, did a, uh, a, a workshop on this last week, last Friday, and uh, I plan to put a, a post on this together. I'm hoping to put it up on Monday. Uh, it'll be a short YouTube video of about like five minutes uh, that just kind of gets at the core of, of what this is. Uh, and it's uh, essentially this way of listing out your options and choosing among them. Uh, but we go into depth uh, about, a, a, you know, each one of these modules are uh, the lecture modules or an hour and a half. And we get into a sense of what is important about it. We also start to get into um, where it can be applied. And we also do some exercises and discussions and, and uh, practical applications. Uh, then uh, this is a new section to this uh, cohort. The first cohort, uh, this wasn't there. I, uh, but it, it was 
a, a theme that showed up throughout all of the modules and uh, it was something that we wind up discussing. So I'm like, you know what, let's make a whole module out of this. So this, this is about organizing. You know, this is uh, not about, you know, here's a kitchen and, and this is how you set it up. That's not what this is. This is about the fundamentals of organizing and how to start thinking through individual items that are around you to support you. Um, the, the, the same principles show up throughout the, the course. Then we talk about changing course. This is uh, what I call the lighthouse technique where we'll use reminders in a way that um, as a, oftentimes reminders are like used in a way that you could just ignore. And we're gonna try to use it in a way that will highlight decisions that are important in the course of, of uh, moving from one thing to the next. Um, to, and then we'll also in the same module talk about uh, the process of engaging something, the process of getting into uh, uh, something, uh, whether it's something you don't want to do, something you do want to do, how do you take those decisive steps to just get up to the edge of doing the work? And then if you can, uh, taking that first step. Uh, we, we talk about raising sales. This is um, where uh, you set up your environment to help you uh, better engage your work. This is where you start thinking through um, the uh, stimulation that you that would best help you, as well as removing the uh, the, the distractions, the things that might uh, uh, cause uh, troubles for you. And you know, if something's boring, if it's confusing, if it's overwhelming, how do you start? Uh, so, you know, those negotiating those I don't feel like it feelings. Then we get into staying on course. This is um, what's uh, what might be called hard work. You know, particularly those uh, I don't want to kind of uh, feelings we, we get into in more depth here. Um, when you're feeling confused, you're feeling overwhelmed. Um, you know, in those moments, there's a there's this um, tendency to uh, shift from um, you know feeling overwhelmed to hopefully uh, or or feeling bored to try to find that kind of um, zone in which you're able to start feeling challenged in a way that you you can work with. Uh, crafting messages is about uh, writing tasks, uh, but doing it in a way that's not about creating a demand for yourself. It's more that we're trying to draft invitations. We're trying to make it so that um, they work for us in the moment. We try to support that sense of agency that we'll have in the future and that arrives at some point in the present so that we can feel like, okay, yes, this is a thing I want to do. Um, then uh, we talk about uh, distant voyages. This is about um, a tool I call uh, the honor list, uh, where we build out a daily sort of rhythm, um, something like a, a to-do list of the day, but I think it's more of a, a, it's something that's more honest with where you are and how to gradually shift that towards things that you might want to do so that you can do things over long periods of time. Um, and, and it's about minimizing the decisions that go into that because uh, decisions after all can be quite exhausting. I mean, much of this course is about um, managing the weight of decisions. Uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, clearing decks. This is uh, where we manage uh, at the beginning that, that anchor list that I talked about. Well, there's some um, frayed edges to that. Where do you put things when you're done with it? or uh, perhaps with an inbox, you don't know what to do with the things that are in there. We start thinking about how do we optimize lists? How do we keep our lists so that they work for us? How do we make them so that um, they uh, don't become overwhelming and need to be pro processed every time we look at them? And then the 10th uh, module, we're going to look at what's uh, what I call working through. This is um, when things are overwhelmed, when things are, you know, you've got too many things in the inbox or in your email or whatever, how do you start uh, uh, negotiating that to work them, work them through to make them useful once again? So basically, this is about, you know, those who are struggling with attention, they have burdened relationships, their, their inbox is flooded. Um, it's unclear how to get to things, unclear, unable to take on commitments. Um, these uh, things that uh, you, know, you struggle with, hopefully these sort of techniques will help you get on top of uh, the troubles that underlie these uh, commonalities. Um, so 
my name is Koro Shtini. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a psychoanalyst, a productivity writer, um, musician as well. I think there is an overlap between um, meaningful productivity, uh, creativity, and and the wandering mind. I you know I'm I'm writing about myself in some ways with this, but I also have found that there's a number of people that um, this is helpful for these a lot of these techniques. Um, so I know, you know, I've developed this from personal work, as I mentioned, but also clinical work. You know, anytime that, you know, for example, writing Creating Flow with OmniFocus or the Being Productive videos, anytime I suggested a technique or an idea, if I met uh, resistance or a problem, I would say, okay, what's the trouble? And we'd sit down and think it through and try to figure out what, where the rubber wasn't hitting the road. And so that's been the process in which this this uh, course has developed um and uh so i'm doing this in an online setting live uh you know some people have asked uh, can i do this uh, you know am i going to write a book on this or uh, do a self-paced video course uh maybe uh, i have a lot of uh, the ideas are already in those books and and uh, in the course but this is you know streamlined for the wandering mind and the uh other idea is that a, a live online setting, there's something I find magical to it. There's this idea of supporting each other that I think comes together really well. Uh, there's, there's an accountability, there's an aliveness to it. There's, there are exercises, there's, a, there's um, uh, breakout rooms. Um, and uh, you have these moments to reflect, you have prompts and you have a pacing to, to develop it all. Um, you know, part of what makes, uh, I think, it difficult for a wandering mind is that the, the accountability and the kind of follow through that is hard to maintain without the sort of structure. Uh, it's a gradual pace. The um, first cohort, I, I had uh, eight, uh, eight uh, uh, modules in within four weeks. And uh, there were also four Q&A sessions in that. I've expanded this. So now there's, instead of eight modules, it's 10 modules. And I've also, instead of over four weeks, it's now 10 weeks. So it's a much more gradual pace. You'd have one lecture during the week and one Q&A session during the week. Uh, they're at uh, both occurring at 5 p.m. Central. Uh, one's on Monday, one's on Thursday. Um, the Monday is at uh, from 5 to 6.30 and the Thursday is from 5 to 6.00. And so we wind up uh, introducing one topic. You guys get to think about it, work it through. And then I, you know, we can think about how it went, didn't go all that and discuss it. And then you have the weekend to kind of think it through some more if you want. And then the next week we start up with the next uh, module and each module kind of builds on the last, you know, they kind of build up and, and, and uh, develop on each other. Um, I mentioned the hours. Uh, I have a number of, uh, you know, a lot of people were very happy about it. Uh, here's a number of um, um, testimonials. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of jump through them, uh, but it's really, there's a number of very positive things said, and I'm so happy that that the first cohort was, uh, there were a good number of people who felt really helped. And it, it just, um, you know, warmed my heart. And what can I say? Um, you know, the, this was an uh, interesting, it's such a broad array of people uh, showed up uh, from all walks of life and from, you know, whether uh, in the professional setting and the uh, uh, home business setting and the students, uh, actors, uh, it's just a broad range of people. And it was just wonderful to see them come together and kind of work together. Um, I thought this was cool, like this basic life skill idea. Like, yes, <laughs> these are basic life skills. I find that these things kind of like, once you kind of have them in place, they I find they help. It's like, um, it's not a, uh, uh, it's not like a task system, like, you know, creating flow with OmniFocus was, uh, but it's like the interface with one. It's like, how do you connect with that so that they can work well for you, whatever system you decide to use? Um, yeah, more stuff. All right. Uh, techniques that are useful. Anyway. All right. So if you want to look at more, go to beingproductive.org slash reviews. And uh, there's, you can see other, other works I've done. Uh, I'm doing this through an application process. Uh, so once the cart opens next uh, Thursday, I believe, 
then you should be able to uh, 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 apply. Uh, and then I'll go through and just uh, set you up if, if it works out. So uh, really the reason for the application process um, is uh, twofold. Uh, one, there's a limited number of seats, so um, uh, there's that. Uh, secondly, uh, there's uh, the uh, disclaimer on there that I won't be working as your uh, physician or, or therapist, that you have to say, okay, yeah, I get it. And that's basically the, the main reasons. But then also, uh, one nice thing I added to the application is just what, do you, what are you hoping to get? What is it that's, um, what have you tried? And that helps me orient myself to, to making sure that I'm, I'm there with you, you know, with the cohort while you're there. Um, I already described this course of 10 weeks, um, 10 modules, nine implementation sessions. And uh, there's a private forum. Yeah, I set up a circle account where uh, you get to, to, to discuss. Um, there's already cohort one there and they've got their own private space. And then there's like a little space where it's like a public forum, if you will. And you'll have your own private space for cohort two to be able to discuss amongst your, your peers. Um, and there's the, the website and uh, classes will start on uh, February 3rd. Anyway, that's that. I'm, I'm happy to field questions and, and talk now. Let me stop this uh, share here. There we go. And, uh, close this up. So any thoughts, questions, please feel free to raise your hand and I'd be happy to, to, to answer. Let me see, there's a bunch of things in the chat. Doesn't look like there's many questions. <laughs> so Andrew's just trying, I know a number of you joined in the middle. I know there's a lot of, there's some troubles with the link that went out. Somehow it was an old link. I don't know how that happened. Um, but uh, um, anyway, I apologize for that. I'll have a recording of this uh, set up for you. Cool. Any thoughts? Otherwise we can uh, end early. I'd be happy to answer anything. Earlier I spoke, here we go. ADHD is a subset of the greater group of people with wandering mind. Do you have a term for that larger, larger group? Those with wandering minds, that's it. Um, so it could be those who have anxiety, uh, those who have, um, uh, you know, who are creative, those who are, um, uh, the, the, the feature of struggle of staying on top of things of, uh, and then being able to fully zone in at times and then other times just losing it and not knowing how to get there. And I see that happen across a, 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 an array of, um, of whether it's um, just characteristics or because uh, it, it's not just like a diagnosis, you know, if I just say ADHD or something, even that in itself can be looked at as a spectrum. Um, so uh, I just call it wandering mind. Uh, so uh, I'm going to come back to the, how big of the groups will be because the Kirby's question, I think fits in neuro atypical or yeah, I've heard of also neurodivergent. Um, I, I imagine so I, the, the trouble with the term neurodivergent, I, it, it came out, I think in the nineties, if I'm not mistaken, it's recently taken off, taken off. It's like a, um, uh, really become a, a, a major thing. But I've um, heard it ascribed to a number of different situations, uh, mainly with ADHD and uh, those with um, an autism spectrum disorder. Um, but um, it, it, so yes, I think it can fit often with, with that group. I can't say it, it works totally 100% with everybody in case they have a diagnosis there. It's, there's no way for me to make that guarantee because again, so many people are so different. Um, but yes, I think it would uh, you know, be along those lines. Um, how big will the groups be? Uh, I'm aiming between, uh, I'd say 30 to 40 at this point, but I don't know if it'll go there. Uh, the last time we were at, uh, uh, at about 28 people, I believe. And um, uh, that seemed to be nice, uh, but uh, I'm looking to see if it, it can expand, but maybe it'll be short or smaller. I don't know what the demand will be this time around. Um, 
resistant to any outside demand. I'm trying to do things I don't want. I feel like I didn't find I found a few months ago. So Matthias, yeah. So I think that that is what I'm trying to address. You know, there's there's a degree of um, uh, of uh, of um, of uh, that agency, that difficulty of being told what to do. Now there is a degree of 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 me saying, well, here's something you can try. So for example, the uh, the anchor technique that I describe and that I'll be posting hopefully soon, um, which will be also the first main lecture uh, after the introduction lecture. Um, it's a technique, it's a set of rules. And uh, if you follow them, they, they help guide yourself. What I try to do in any of these things, as well as my uh, work as, um, a therapist, psychoanalyst, uh, I try to support that sense of agency. Agency being defined as a uh, you know the ability to make a clear decision for yourself. Um, that if you can internalize and in, you know what's important to you from outside and then come to a conclusion for yourself, uh, that's you know a, a solid way to start a sense of flow. Um, and the idea, though, is that you want to be able to do that in a way that feels responsible. The cost. Uh, so it's, uh, I have it costing 1375, uh, 1375. So again, this is uh, about 19 sessions over which this, this occurs. Um, and uh, it's like a, working in a group. Um, and uh, anyway, I find it. Uh, I had to think that through balancing my own workload with this and trying to make it in, in something that feels like it would be of value to you. Anyway, that's the number I came with at the moment. Um, I will be moving, wondering if it would be good or bad option. To, are you thinking there may be a third cohort? Um, okay, good or bad. So what I plan to do is I try to record, I, I plan to record everyone um, and, uh, and put them uh, there for available to watch, but I think you, you miss something if you just watch the recording. Then again, I had one of the students in the last one do all of them through recording and she felt like she, she benefited. Um, just personally, I feel like there's, there's something more engaging to me in person. Um, so I can't say for certain, would you, would you benefit or, or not? Is there going to be a third cohort? I hope so. Uh, let, let's see how, it, uh, it's always a thing that I, uh, I, uh, uh, you have in the back of my mind. It's like, um, see, I'm not a good judge of, 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 of how to do that. <laughs> Here's what happens. I, I write a book and it does well, or not. let's say creating flow with OmniFocus. I, I, I write it again. And then until the end, I'm like, I don't know how this will go. <laughs> like it, even if I've done very well with it in the past, it, I don't know it until I've seen it, until it actually happens. The last cohort, um, you know, really succeeded more than I, had expected and uh but i don't know how this one will go and uh i hope it goes well um you know so far i've uh let's see uh, had the uh, calls drop out last week and the uh and this one the link did not go out correctly so <laughs> i'm not sure hopefully it goes fine um and if things go well then yes i aim for a third cohort all right um Matthias, I was using the, uh, I, I was in the anchor session last week. Uh, Help me. Out. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. That's good to hear. I'm glad. Uh, Peter too. Good. Wonderful. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that's been a popular sort of thing. And, you know, it's, it's the idea of the anchor is about that supporting sense of agency that, uh, you know, if I go to the, the lesson of um, raising sales, you know, this idea of like, how do I set up my environment? How do I do that in a way that I don't get distracted so that um, I lose myself in the way? Um, then uh, 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 what, what uh, uh, you're trying to support that ability to make a decision and then stay with that decision. And, um, but stay with that decision in a way that's not about you holding on and you know, you know, gra grabbing white knuckling your way through. Um, and, uh, you know, if you think about, uh, the lighthouse technique, again, it's, it's not just, okay, I got to force myself and move on to the next thing. It's about, uh, 
trying to highlight the point of decision where it's like, okay, this is a good time to decide. Do I transition or do I not? Um, same thing with, um, you know, writing tasks. You know, it's, it's you know, for example, there was a, I, I wrote a, a while back, this post that became, I think, popular, which was like the writing a task that starts with the word consider. You know, suddenly, instead of saying, um, you know, do your, you know, clean, what is it? do the dishes or whatever it is. It's consider doing the dishes. All right. Now, instead of like, I either have to check it off or not and do the dishes or not. And if you're angry at yourself, it's there's, if you've considered it, you've done the work of considering it. Maybe there's plenty of other things going on. And then there's a way to, to use that in a way that's not about procrastinating and about avoiding other things and all that. So it kind of opened up certain things. So it's that idea of supporting the sense of your ability to make a decision in the moment. Um, and that's, that's like, I'm, I aim for that throughout the course. Is there a recording of the anchor session available? So uh, the anchor recording, uh, I'm setting up a post that summarizes all of it. Um, something where, uh, so it'll be like a five, six minute post, uh, like a YouTube video, and then like a broader description of it. Um, the, I didn't, uh, I'm not gonna make that recording broadly available because there are people in it and um, that uh, I don't know, um, uh, there, there are parts where I phase in and out of the, the talk and I haven't blocked out certain things and all that. So if I can, um, uh, I do plan to hopefully do that with this one where I'll block things out. It's much simpler on this, this lecture than that one. And, uh, and then similarly with the, in the talks, in the, uh, in the course, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I try my best to make it a, a space where you guys have your own private space. So I'm not, you know, the, the recordings will be available just to you in Circle. Um, I'm not going to post them elsewhere. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, that answers everything, didn't I? If I didn't finish, if, if I, if I, if there's like a lingering question, if I didn't quite answer your question, any of those that I tried to go through in the chat, please let me know. We have to answer. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think we can probably wrap it up there. Um, thank you everybody for coming. And, uh, Card opens on Thursday, so uh, uh, I believe on Thursday. Um, but stay tuned on the um, the newsletter, and that's where you'll know definitively. So you're very welcome. Thank you for being here, and uh, uh, you know, hope to see you. All right, cool.